thank you everybody for turning up to this morning's lecture. Um, it's, a, it's the very first lecture in our brand new center. Uh, for those of you who don't know which center this is, the Center for uh, Regenerative Design and Engineering for a Net Positive World. And if you find that's a lot of words to carry around in your head, then we just say renew. Uh, and it's sort of quite evocative of what we're trying to do. Um, it's also a wonderful thing that for a center that is quite heavy on the architecture, architects and the civil engineers, our very first Global South chair is a chemical engineer. Mm -hmm. So it's absolutely fantastic. It really speaks to the fact that we're trying to work across disciplinary boundaries in recognition of the fact that our challenges are not, you know, they're not lying within individual domains. There's often a lot of crossover across the several domains that our faculty is working in and indeed the university is working in. So, uh, yeah, we are absolutely delighted that Murillo is here. Uh, a brief introduction to Murillo. He's a professor of chemical engineering uh, at, um, uh, University of Ribeirão Preto. Did I say that okay? Not bad. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, of course, he's published very, very widely. His H index, I looked it up this morning, is 38 on Google Scholar, which is amazing, and an I 10 index of 85. So lots of young scholars in the room. This is where you're hopefully headed. Uh, a lot of the, his work is on permeability evaluation of porous and dense materials. Um, and of course, in addition to books and things like that. He has four patents under his belt. He's done a lot of consultancy work in Brazil uh, across a diversity of sectors, looking at things like sizing, optimization, performance evaluation. Sorry, I'm reading it out because there's just so much to, to go through. Um, uh, and to me, what was amazing is also he's a technical expert for the Brazilian courts to do to, on stuff to do with chemical engineering. That's just amazing. So Murillo's impact is very big in academia as regards his published work, but also he's had a huge impact on industry and eventually into government and policy in that sense. So it's a very, very broad canvas and we are very honored to have him here today. And he's chosen a wonderful uh, title for his talk, A Deep Journey into the Permeable permeability assessment of key engineering materials. And for those of you who read the abstract of the talk, you must be burning with curiosity as I am to find out exactly what it is that, that uh, is similar between a face mark, face mask, a porcelain tile, fertilizer grain, packaging film, catalytic filter, fiberboard sheet, and a tissue scaffold. So Murilo, with, uh, with no further ado, I invite you to join us uh, and deliver the inaugural talk for Renew. Uh, you've got your mic on. I will remove my mic. Uh, hello and good morning, everyone. I thank you very much for the opportunity for Sukumar and Juliana to, to be here. And I, I have prepared a presentation with this topic about permeability, but uh, the idea is to spread into different areas where, of which we can afterwards talk about. So I hope my English is okay. It's, okay, okay, thank you. So this is just uh, where I come from. I come from the state of Sao Paulo in Brazil. And this is my university uh, called University of Ribeirão Preto or UNAERP. Uh, just some, uh, Juliana, this is, uh, we have a pointer. The pointer is the, okay, oh, perfect, okay. I come from Brazil. Brazil is uh, 215 million people. I come from this state of state of Sao Paulo, which is almost the size of UK, just in, say, in, in comparison to you, uh, 45 million people. And I come from the city, city of Ribeirão Preto, which is in English Black, Black Creek. I don't see any creek over there anymore. But on, anyway, uh, uh, this is the Brazilian capital of agribusiness. We have 712,000 people there. 
but this is the main campus of uh, UNAERP, but we have another campus uh, in the seashore. Uh, the name of the city is Guarujá, which means narrow path in the indigenous uh, language uh, with uh, 320,000 people there. This is my campus with uh, 6,000 students. Uh, and the chemical engineering is over, over here, I think. Uh, and we have just some numbers to, 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 to say from uh, where I come from. Uh, we have more than 90 international partnerships in 25 countries. Myself, I have a lot of interaction with India and with uh, Turkey, uh, Italy, uh, USA, and also here in England, in Birmingham. Uh, my background, I am I'm, now I'm the coordinator of the postgraduate program in environmental technology, where we have the master's and the PhD courses. We have two lines, two research lines, the sustainable, sustainable development and the pollution control. We are in four groups, research groups, environmental microbiology, water resources, sustainability and waste management, and the group that I belong, the materials and environmental process optimization. We are in 14 researchers, professors, and now we have 70 masters and PhD students doing their, their work there. We also work with the goals, the sustainable development, development goals, but also we have some focus. Uh, my main focus is the affordable clean energy and also industry innovation infrastructure but we also work a lot with the clean water and sanitation. And these three are the main ones in my group, my research group. Uh, just my background, I'm, I am a chemical engineer from University of Sao Carlos, which is a city in the state of Sao Paulo. Uh, from 91 to 93, I, will, I did my master in, uh, in chemical engineering, performance evaluation of aerosol monitoring devices. Then from 93 to 97, my PhD uh, about aerosol filtration at high temperatures. And I came to England to work in Birmingham from well, many, many years ago to work in, with the development of ceramic filters for, for hot gas filtration. My supervisor was, was Professor Jonathan Seville. I don't know if anyone knows him there, but he's a, uh, a nice guy in this subject, in the uh, hot gas filtration. And then I did my postdoc also in the fluid dynamic evaluation of porous and dense refractory ceramics. Uh, since 1998, I'm a professor at the University of Ribeirão Preto. Uh, from 20, uh, 2003 to now, we started the post-graduation program in environmental technology. Now I am the coordinator, but I'm a professor and also a supervisor of the students. And from 27 to now, I'm also advisor and a, um, a consultant uh, for the engineering projects for the industry. And I have a, a company. Well, the company is myself. <laughs> just, just to let you know. <laughs> just to pay less taxes. That's the point. So otherwise, you have to pay uh, a lot uh, if you don't have a company. I don't know why. Anyway. Well, my my work in the university. We have I have six disciplines: chemical reactor engineering, two unit operations. Uh, mostly about heat exchangers and solid solid or solid gas separation, uh, one chemical process design, one discipline for air pollution control, and one for tox env environmental control. This one is in the master and the PhD program. And I also have uh, in the past four, 40 undergrad plus 21 master and 90 PhD students. Now I have two 12 students uh, uh, among the undergrads, master and PhD. 
and I have this in the, my life for uh, 140 papers, four patents, and four book chapters. I changed everything for a small island in, the, in Greece. If possible, I could change everything for a small island. But no one uh, cares about the. So anyway, we can. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, my main topics of research is permeability assessment of solid materials, which I will talk a little uh, today. But uh, about a, a variety of materials, foams, geopolymers, cement pastes, fibro fibrous mats, polymer fumes. But uh, the the main topic of uh, application for these materials is indoor outdoor air quality, uh, mainly for filters in um, indoor environments, but also filters for uh, emissions, atmospheric emissions. Um, and also uh, I work with the recovery and treatment of byproducts from the industrial process. Uh, for example, in Brazil, we are the largest sugarcane producer in the world. India is the second and maybe China. Well, China is always we're between the first or second, the third one. Yes. Uh, but we have a very large problem with the sugar cane, which is vinous, which is an effluent. So you have to treat that. I could talk about vinous for the whole day if it's someone uh, would like to see what we can do about this wastewater, industrial wastewater. It's a big problem. But it's a big solution also because we have a lot of nutrients to separate so this is a separation problem also uh, but we have also problems with coffee vapors sooty ashes from the uh, sugarcane bagasse burning another big problem for the environment so we have a lot of problems uh, we, we are uh, a big country with a, a, a large production in the agro industrial sector but also we have big problems to solve uh, then I have these consultants, 140 consultancies, uh, about the sizing of equipment to control atmospheric pollution or to do the incineration pyrolysis of materials, biomass mainly, and also for the food, the fertilizer, mineral, pesticide, sugar cane, and biodiesel industries. So I thank, I thank God that they have a lot of work to do. But I, the, the point is that I can bring these problems to the university and work with the students with real problems to solve it. We don't need to, to create any, any possible problem. These are the real problems to solve. So uh, this is our journey, I mean, uh, because I, I'm trying to explore some uh, points with materials that are important for the, for example, for the um, for the op optimization and the um, of the material and the process aiming at air pollution control mainly. So I put in the abstracts of my presentation some materials, for example, a facial mask, a concrete wall a fertilizer grain, a catalytic filter, a pervious pavement, a plastic film, tissue, scaffold, and a fiber cement sheet. All these materials I work in my lab. This is not uh, only from the internet. These are materials that we work at the lab. And what uh, all these materials have in common? Yes. The performance of these materials depends on how uh, easily the gases or liquids penetrate, escape, or pass through their structure. For a, a facial mask, we need the air to come through the mask. So if it's difficult for the air to come through, so it's difficult to breathe, so you die anyway, uh, with COVID or without COVID, for example. For a concrete wall, it will have the same problem. Uh, in this case, we don't want any penetration of any any fluid for example co2 can do the carbonation for the chloride you can have the attack of the the metal inside the concrete and we have you can degrade the the material for the fertilizer grain we need the water to come into to release it to solubilize 
the components to release to the soil. For a catalytic filter, we need the gas to go into, to cross the filter, to convert the, the, the pollutants into less harm, harmful uh, components. For the pav pervious pavements, uh, we need the water to go through. For the plastic film, we need to protect, for example, fruits to avoid the CO2 or the oxygen to, to, to cross. Uh, for the tissue scaffold, we need the blood to go through the, the pores and to release the nutrients to the body. And for the fiber cement sheet, we need to avoid the penetration of moisture. So in all these cases, we need to investigate how the fluids go through. This is important for the, uh, the development of new materials. So this is my life. So the point is that uh, to, to cross or to pass or to penetrate these materials, we need some void spaces. So the idea is that we can call all these materials as, as a porous materials. There is a, some um, uh, fighting about some groups, which is porous, which is dense. But anyway, uh, in our case, we call this uh, porous where we have space and we can cross any material, a atom or a fluid, we will call from now on uh, the porous materials. So the, the idea is the porous materials is a, a solid contained void spaces, uh, either connected or unconnected, dispersed within or either in a, either regular or random manner. So we can have this uh, structure, uh, to pass air, oil, water, or any fluid that we uh, need to study. And the, the porous, this porous medium, medium uh, depends on a se uh, 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 several um, parameters, the volume fraction, the size, the shape, and the connectivity. So this is where I'm going to explore a little before I talk about the permeation. It's that okay? My English? Okay. Okay. I don't, I'm, I'm not convinced, but anyway. <laughs> okay. So the first topic is about porosity. But porosity is defined as a fraction of the apparent volume of the material, which is attributed to the voids, uh, detected by any method that you choose. So we have uh, here four types of porosity. Closed porosity, which is not accessible to fluids. Of course, I can access by diffusion and a solid type diffusion uh, between the atoms. That's not uh, a point. But anyway, for fluids, the macroscopic fluids, it's not accessible. But this is a defect for the structure. We have open porosity, which is accessible from the outside to a fluid, but cannot go anywhere. We have the connected porosity, which is a series of poros that are interconnected, but no, not always going to anywhere. Uh, and finally, the permeable porosity or true porosity, which is the porosity that can help us to cross the structure. This is important for, for, for example, for a filter. For a filter, air needs to come from one side to the other side for a catalytic material or for a, uh, any kind of filtering material, we needed to cross to have some action in between here in the material itself. So just to have a scale of porosity that we, we talk about, for, we can start with an aerogel, which is this material with 90, 0.998 porosity which is going to zero to one. So it's almost nothing. It's almost air. To the below here, where we have materials that we cannot even talk about porosity. For example, the poly polymer film. If you say that a polymer film is uh, porous materials, you are banned from university. Normally they, they think, they think you no, know, they say that material is non-porous, but anyway, we have a flow. But if you have a flow, you need some space too. So it's a porous in the sense that we have a 
uh, uh, flow of uh, atom or a molecule or a fluid itself through the material. Uh, so we don't have any porosity, but if, for example, if you have a porcelain tile, a porcelain floor, uh, the porosity uh, varies from 0.05%. So in all these cases, we have porosity and we have flow through. That's the idea. So all these materials are uh, the topics uh, we are studying in the lab. Uh, the, the pore can be in the molecular scale, for example, for zeolites, where we have in the angstrom um, size scale. For example, this, this type of uh, zeolite from, for 3.8 angstrom to 7.4 angstrom. This is the pore size, so it can have flow through. And we have flow through because zeolite is used, for example, in Brazil, zeolite. Uh, zeolites are used to produce the um, anhydros, anhydro, anhydro, anhydroethanol. In the past, you used uh, cyclohexan to separate the ethanol from water. Today, we don't use it anymore. We just use zeolites. So, since Brazil is the largest ethanol producer, we are one of the largest zeolite users in the world to, to separate. Um, the good question. I think all synthetics because we don't have a natural with the same performance there for this application. So this is a, a, a nice field to work also to explore in the industry. This is a geopolymer. I think geopolymer is a material that is closer to the civil engineering. We have a lot of studies uh, using geopolymers, but the size of the geopolymer itself is in the angstrom scale also, in the molecular scale, but also after you prepare the material, you can have larger pores. Oh, of course, sorry. Zero point one nanometer is uh, one angstrom. Yeah. Yes, because angstrom is not a, a used uh, unit. Yeah. Nano. Okay. Yes, because it's nanotechnology, not uh, angstrom technology. So it's okay. No, but uh, perfect. So you have also some porosity in the micrometer range. For example, this is a porcelain tile. This is the size of pores. Most of the pores are closed porosity, so it's not accessible. That's the idea for the floor. You don't want to water to penetrate and to have stains in the, in the material, but you have to measure. The point of all materials that I'm presenting is that we have to measure the porosity, the accessible porosity for the good or for the evil. For in this case, if you have accessible porosity for the evil, you lose the material. But for other case, you have to measure and to have a very good uh, permeation uh, degree. This is a micro or oh, millimeter, it's more, uh, focused millimeter scale. Uh, we have uh, here a uh, ceramic ceramic replica or a geocasting foam. So you have a pore, a big one, big big pores from from, for example, one millimeter or two or three or four millimeters size in diameter. In some cases, I put here the the reference just to let clear that. Not all materials that I'm presenting come from my work. Some are just examples to, to show to you. Uh, this is uh, another point. Main, um, must, um, let's say many materials have pores in different scales. For example, this is a ceramic replica used for, if you don't know, this material is used for molten metal filtration to remove inclusions. So you have the molten metal, and the, then you pass the molten metal, metal 
through this to remove um, uh, non-soluble particles or non-soluble materials. So you retain uh, in the filter here about 700 to 1000 degrees. This is the temperature range. And this is a, a very used material in the multimetal industry. But the, in each strut that you have here, you have also porosity. So you have a small porosity here. You have the porosity between or inside and uh, each strut. Because in the, uh, this material was prepared by uh, a slurry, ceramic slurry, that was coated over um, polymeric uh, foam. Then you just burn and remove the polymeric foam, and you have the ceramic foam. So you have uh, open uh, uh, an open structure inside each strut. So uh, this is what I have to do in my lab, the structures of uh, different morphologies, and to measure the permeation effect of different uh, types. For example, this is a biomorphic material, main uh, it is a ceramic material but the former material was uh, wood uh, this is um this is a um, geocasting ceramic replica honeycomb this is a 3d lattice printed with geopolymer i have some here to show if you want this is a nice material uh, we use this material for a catalyst to produce biodiesel a uh, catalyst to convert uh, toxic molecules and other less harmful uh, in a very high permeability degree for this material. So I have different shapes that nature gave us uh, to work and to measure. So this is a map where we can find the porosity level, which goes from zero to one or 100%. And the pore size or channel pore or void size from angstrom again, uh, or atomic level to the millimeter centimeter level. So you have different families of materials, zeolites, for example, mesoporous silica, granular media, ceramic membranes, honeycombs. For each one, you can find here the application. So this is a Every time that I receive a material in my lab, the first thing that I do is to measure porosity, measure pore size, go to a map and see where it I can find and what kind of application I can think about of the material. Then uh, we take the material and go to again to the lab to measure the permeation. Then we have uh, the complete map to choose the real application and then we test. For example, for a material, for a wastewater treatment, a filter. We just go to the lab, measure the, tree, the, the pore size, measure porosity, measure permeability, and go to the lab to see if we can separate the, the, the phase, for example, the pollutant or the suspension anyway. So, but anyway, uh, after we have this kind of porosity and pore channel, the question is uh, how the fluid can go into the material? How the fluid can penetrate or escape or pass through the material? This is an example of a concrete. We have here a metal. Uh, I don't know in English, the, the, the armadura metallica, the armor, not armor. Okay, okay. So we can have the penetration by three mechanisms, diffusion, capillarity, or permeation. By diffusion, for example, we have the CO2. CO2 come from the atmosphere, go into, and we have the carbonation of the cement paste, and, it, and then you can lose the strengths uh, of the material. By capillarity, we can go, we can have the penetration of chlorides, for example, and these chlorides can attack the metal Metal what? Green foam. Ah, reinforcement. Okay, okay, now it's okay. Sorry, sorry for that. Okay, and by permeation, uh, we have also the penetration of the tree. If you don't, if you don't 
take care. Uh, so permeation, it's an uh, intensification of the two other mechanisms. So this is uh, the diffusion mechanism. The fluid transport is due to a gradient of concentration. You go to from the most concentrated to the more diluted. So you have the movement of molecules. So in this case, we can have the penetration to the closed porosity. Uh, means that even the closed porosity, you have atoms or molecules when you have the molecular uh, voids. So you can have this uh, um, movement. Uh, then you have the capillarity, which is due to the pressure gradients, normally a hydrostatic uh, uh, column. So you, you can have the, the, the movement of the, in this case, of just liquid. And finally, you have the permeation itself. So the permeation is the fluid transport due to a pressure gradient. You have a higher pressure this side, lower pressure this side, and you have a connected porosity. So the technique of permeation is to find this class of porosity, which I told you before is important for a variety of applications. But in other case, we just would like to cut. We don't need to cross any, uh, any fluid through. So my uh, work in the lab is about permeometry, which is the set of techniques used to access the interconnected fraction of voids in a portal structure, based on an action pressure, action responsive relationship. For example, in your case, we put pressure and we measure flow. And if you have the connected porosity, we're going to find flow the other side. So that's the idea of the technique. Uh, so it's helpful to quantify the connectivity of the pores, but also to estimate the pressure flow response. For example, for a facial mask, uh, we take the mask. That was our project in the, 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 the recent past. Uh, we have a mask and we apply a pressure and we measure the flow. And we compare this with the human breathing. So the idea is you have the same or less uh, force to uh, help the air to, to go inside, to breathe. So we have three techniques, the steady state technique, uh, which we measure pressure against flow rate, hot gas permeometry, and pressure or vacuum decay. I'm talking about these techniques because now I'm going to enter in the permeability itself where we can use the, uh, the information. But the main point is how to get the information. How to use it is afterwards, but first, how to get the information from the material. So one problem that you have to compare is that we have a lot, a lot of units. This is a problem for us because every application that they have, I need to convert the unit, the unit to another one, otherwise my partner does not understand uh, anything about what uh, we got from the lab. But the point is that we have two models. I think it's, it's cutting there, but uh, no, no problem. Uh, this is permeability model, maybe. The black bar. Here. That we can definitely shut. And then, yeah, I think the other one we don't have. Okay, no, no problem. Anyway, so you have two permeability models. May, uh, one model is by Henry Darcy, another model is for Philip Forsheimer. Uh, the idea is that you have the pressure drop. This is our uh, gradient that you apply, and you get this is the cost, this is the benefit. The benefit is the flow through the material. And you have the one property, which is the viscosity. And we have two properties which belongs to the material, the thickness and this constant or this coefficient, which is called the Darcy permeability coefficient. In units, use the units of square meter. Uh, but this, this model is very simplistic. So we apply in the lab. This is another one 
which is the, called the Forsheimer equation or Forsheimer model, where you have two terms. And here is the velocity, the velocity of the flow. Velocity means uh, flow rate divided by area. So this belongs to the flow. Uh, the properties are the thickness, the K1 and the K2, which are permeability coefficient, and L is the thickness of the material. So we divide it in three parts, the fluid properties, the medium uh, features, and the flow features. And we have here the, the coefficients. Uh, K1 is measured in, in square meter, and K2 is measured, it's not, you cannot see here, but is measured in meter. Uh, just, to, just to let you know, the typical unit for the, the constant, the K1, which is the Darcy and permeability, is Darcy. Dar one Darcy is 1 to, 10, to the 10 to the minus 12 square meter. So which, what is, what's the meaning of the, the equation? This is the Forsheimer equation. We have two terms. This term is a linear term in velocity. And we say that as we have the flow through the pores, we lose energy. And the energy that we lose uh, is due to the visco action, the fluid, fluid interaction, we have the viscosity, or the fluid interaction with the surface. But as you increase the velocity, we, we start to have a nonlinear term. This nonlinear term, I mean a quadratic term, uh, is due to the pressure loss caused by the curvatures, contractions, enlargements of the pore channels and by distortion of the pressure and velocity fields. So in practice, uh, the pressure drop relationship with the flow is not linear. This is very important because this is the cost benefit. For example, if you want to double the flow, not necessarily you have to double the pressure. Sometimes you have to to have a four time increase in the pressure to have this, to double the flow. So this is important because this is a economy uh, law. We have to pay less, we want to pay less for the benefit of having flow for a material, through the material. So the point of Darcy's law, it does not allow for forecasting. For example, in the lab, I will show you very soon. Uh, if you go to the lab and take the experimental points, for example, here, uh, for a region, then you can use this information only in the region that you have uh, done uh, the collection, the data collection. If you try to do the forecasting, the, uh, this, is, this red line is the Darcy's law. So you go to the, uh, this is the slope of the equation. The point is that you cannot predict anymore the, the behavior. So uh, in our case, we don't, we don't use the Darcy's law just because of that. If you measure in a range, you cannot extrapolate that for other ranges. You lose the real, reliability of the, 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 the data. So what's the target in our lab? To find these two constants. Why? So we can predict the flow for any condition, velocity, flow range, temperature, fluid type, area, and for any application, filtration, absorption, catalysis. So the idea is not to measure by itself the parameter, is measure and to compare with the application. So the point is how to measure, how to obtain these coefficients, which are uh, closely related to porosity and void sides. Uh, so uh, in the beginning, I told you about pore size and porosity. Now we have these two constants or two coefficients with the set of these two coefficients plus porosity plus pore size I can have a complete uh, map of my material to um, find the best application for it, or to optimize the processing to get what we need from these coefficients. So we have two choices where either we go to modeling, CFG, or any equation, 
to just to predict, or we go to the lab and measure. So my lab, my life in lab has been doing the measurement of all material that you can find in the world. So we have partnership with uh, people from everywhere. They send materials for us to, to measure. Then we give back the map. These materials is, belongs to this class and you can use these materials for this. And if you want to optimize the material, you should do that. Reduce the pore size, increase the pore size, increase porosity, or change the structure to get a specific value for this. Experimental, in the experimental um, point of view, it's not uh, complicated, it's easy. Instead, for, for us, that for many years doing that, uh, you just, just have to, to fix the sample in a sample holder. Then you have to measure the flow through, and you have to measure the pressure through the sample. And we have samples uh, of different types I will show you. Uh, for example, this is a setup for airflow. This is a setup for water flow. This is a setup. This one is in Padova, Italy, where we have a partnership with the, in, in fact, it's in the city of Legnaro. Legnaro is a small city close to, to Padova in Italy, a nuclear institute. It's to, of nuclear physics, I, I think. They need to measure the permeability of their targets, uranium targets. So we built a permeometer for them. So now they have one just to measure because the idea in the target is a, a target like a small piece. They just put the, uh, the system to operate, I think, at a thousand degrees. And they need to find how the, the, the atoms, the radioactive ions uh, spread through the material. So they have one. Of course, this is not the one for uranium, but this is one for lanthanum, uh, which is the closest that they can have from the uranium. Then they do the uranium test in another chamber. Uh, this, is a set, this is our different types of measurement devices, uh, rotameters, uh, soap bubble flow meters, uh, these different types of sample holders for every type of sample. These are the samples that you get. For example, brass foams from Chile, uh, portals, silicon carbide from India, geocasting geopolymers from Italy. These are from wastewater treatment, for example. This is for um, hot gas filtration, filtration of gases coming from burning of bagasse. In India, they burn bagasse, uh, biomass, so they uh, need to filtrate. So this is the material that they, they use. Freeze casting foams from Germany. This is also for hot gas filtration. Uh, PLA, PLA is uh, polylactic acid, I think, acid. Uh, from Poland and also from Italy. They use that as a scaffold for um, uh, biological tests to grow cells inside. So they sent to me this material to measure. Nanocellulose fiber mats for them. This is from Rachel, Raquel. Raquel prepared this, this material so in Homer, not Homer, another professor, Professor Elizabeth Frolini in Brazil, uh, to use a facial mask against COVID. Bamboo, um, a construction material, we measure permeability from every direction. This is the, the adobe brick. You say adobe brick? Okay. This is from, this brick came from a disaster in Brazil, from Mariana. Uh, we have the a dam, the breakage of a dam. Uh, killed a lot of people there. And then we have a, a giant uh, space of material that they need to find some application. In, yes.
It was from from my uh, iron mining. So what were you doing with this? They do the bricks. They are trying to do some bricks with the population to build, uh, of course, simple houses there. But the University of um, Lavras, uh, it's a, Lavras is a city in Brazil, in the state of Minas Gerais, uh, Juliana's state. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. um, they are trying to do something with this material because the material is rich in iron. Uh, we cannot do anything else. We cannot. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Of course, that you can build the houses for the uh, entire. Uh, solar system with the amount of uh, waste that you have there. Anyway, the point is that they're trying to see if the material has some advantage in terms of uh, our material itself. For example, mechanical strength, uh, the ability to, to prevent any thermal shocking for the people. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. We have some mortar, concrete, and cement pastes. This cement paste came from Petrobras. They use the cement paste to do the plugs when you do the perforation of the well to find petroleum. Then, if you don't find any petroleum, you need to plug. Uh, the plug is made of uh, cement paste. But the point is we have a lot, a lot of carbon dioxide down there. So they needed to stack the carbon dioxide. And the problem is that the carbon dioxide tries to go through the cement paste and you have the carbonation of that. So they prepared the cement paste and we measure the permeability to see if the CO2 will go through. And if the CO2, you're going to uh, react with the paste. And uh, we can do the test in, in the lab using the CO2 itself or air or any other fluid. Uh, but what was interesting about this result, I can talk about this later uh, to anyone that you. So. Okay, okay, no problem. Perfect, perfect, no problem for me, no problem. I can't talk about uh, for, for days, days. Yes, I uh, just. The range of things that are actually out there in the street, each one of these is an interesting story. Yes, yes, I have, a, yes, for, it, for it, because all materials came from our lab. These are not materials from the internet. These are, are the ones that we have to, to Yes, yes, for each one we have. Just this one, just to let you know that you will find a very nice uh, result. For example, for carbonation, you think that when you have the carbonation, you're going to clog the pores. No. When you have the carbonation, the permeability increases because you have denser phases, but the denser phases going through the walls of the pores. So you have more space. So, uh, and this we got doing uh, in situ carbonation uh, experiment with permeation. You permeate CO2 and see the result in the curve. And you see that the, per the, the, the material becomes more permeable. I increase not porosity, I increase the permeability, yes. 
the porosity uh, decreases. The porosity, the amount of pores decreases because you have one more uh, component inside, which is the CO2, the carbonate. But the since uh, the um, the carbonate phase is denser. Uh, sometimes, you have, not sometimes, depending on, on the water cement ratio, you have uh, more direct path for the flow. Yes, 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 yes. If we're going to pause, would it be appropriate to take a question or two and then? I think uh, about permeability, I will start uh, from now on. So this was just to let you know that you need the porosity, you need the pore size, you need the shape of the pores to investigate any kind of material that you have. But uh, of course, let's... We have some real chemical engineers in the room, so... Yes, 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 please. Yes. Uh, I'll take the other one. Uh, no, very interesting. Uh, so I was um I was mentioning to Leanne and to Dinesh that I actually teach um a particle technology and big okay. topic is a uh, pack bit. And it's very interesting. Uh I mean, all of what you're saying really brings me back to all all the the, the details that I that, that I teach. Um, but I've I've never heard of this. Uh, what do you call it? The the Fochel Forsheimer Forsheimer equation because yes. usually we teach them um, Karman Kuzin equation and Kuzin Ergon equation. Yes. Ergon equation. So I was just wondering if you can tell us a little bit about the difference between these equations. Yes, uh, you have another one, Ergun's equation. Ergen, yeah. Yeah, Ergun's come from here. The only difference for, for, from Ergun to Forsheimer is that you have the K1 and K2 uh, spread into porosity and pore size. I will show you soon uh, uh, Ergun equation with more terms. But the, uh, in, instead, in, in fact, you have the, for Ergun or for Forsheimer, we have these two terms. Normally, you use just Darcy. You? Uh, we just uh, no. We normally use Ergen, Ergen and Carmen Kuseni uh, when planning our flow. Um, but I've never heard of this. Uh, um, but I don't have any uh, square to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice one. May <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is the Ergun equation, and this is the 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 for, uh, la, sorry, uh, it's square the well. yeah. square, and you have the density here. But you have if you get this here, this is one divided by k one, and if you have this here, this is one divided by k two. So that's why normally you have the K1 here, which is there, and you have the K2 here. The cousin in the Karman, cousin in Karman is similar. Sometimes you have the volumetric surface area, area by volume. Sometimes you use the SV surface by volume. But there is, it is, this is the same. The difference that when you go to the lab, we just collect the K1 and K2 after fitting the data. Then, depending on the nature of the material, because the Ergun equation is valid for granular material, but for cellular material, for uh, gel casting forms, you, or for fibrous mats, you don't know if they have the validity of the this two, equations is correct or not. That's the difference. 
But for example, you use the cosine, uh, the Ergun equation to predict the flow through. Flow is pressure drop through packets initially. Oh, packet. Okay, okay, okay. No, yes, I use the same. But normally I start with that. Uh, then I try to correlate the K1, for example, with the particle or the pore size, because this is the particle size, but you can convert it into the pore size. Then, Juliana, the point is, what is the pore size? Because pore is a complex um, entity. You don't have the shape. If you don't have the shape, how can I say size sizes for a, a ball? Ball or sphere has size because it's just the, the diameter. But for other shapes, it's complex. For example, when you go to the lab to measure porosity, we measure porosity, for example, by Archimedes, Archimedes, Archimedean uh, technique, by immersion in water or in other fluids. But for pore size, in the past, they used the, the mercury intrusion. Today, they don't like anymore because of the mercury itself it's a problem but uh, sometimes tomography micro tomography uh, yes bt also uh, but for the pore size it's a problem because uh, in your case for example you have a pore and you have the throat yes. uh, which is the pore here or here so uh, the, the good point of permeability is that we don't have any doubt. You just have the pressure and flow. And always, always that I try to fit, I just use this because this is a straight line. This is a, square, uh, a quadratic equation. I, and I never got a straight line, perfect straight line. And if I got, it's just easy to know that it's not always a straight line. Just go further in the velocity and you see that it starts to grow in a parab uh, parabolic or a quadratic uh, way. Okay. Are there any other oh. questions? Please. Chemical engineer people. Oh, yes, there you go. Thank you, Please. Professor. Very intriguing talk. I have two questions. Please. So from a material perspective, uh, my first question is, uh, there are defects in the material which are quite inevitable. Yes. Is it possible to measure these defects? Yes, is it possible to quantify if the defect will cause any extra flow? Uh, for example, uh, we measure the permeability for corrugated fiber boards, fiber sheets, fiber cement sheets. Corrugated, yes. is okay, okay, and you have micro cracks along the the corrugation. So uh, when you measure, we can detect that we have a perfect uh, fiber sheet and you measure permeability. Mm -hmm. Then you, you, I will show you one. We can measure the permeability of a fiber sheet in every point, every point of the sheet. So you can detect like. Uh, well, in another technique, you can find exactly where the defect is. But I don't see the defect. I see the effect of the defect, if you understand. <laughs> but it's it's a technique to find uh, the defects also. One more. Please. How many? So what? if you are working on two dimensional material, Two dimension, you mean, for example, a mask or a fiber mess or a paper, a film. Yeah, so basically the slits are the pores there between two sheets and there are gaps, which are basically the slits, which is acting as pores. Yes, yeah. but what's the point? Is it possible to measure uh, in that case? Yes, it's possible to measure the, the the individual layers, I mean, and then you have a set of layers. You can measure the complete layer, and then by mathematical subtraction, you can see the the influence of the interlayer layer. If you if I talk to yeah, yeah. talk the correctly, gaps. Yeah. the gaps, yes, a better word, sorry. <laughs> Yes, but uh, uh, by not directly, in indirectly, I can I can check that.
Well, so the idea is oh, well, 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 just to, to remember that we always have uh, this contribution, so we cannot disregard from analysis. Uh, so uh, never try to fit Darcy's law at the beginning. Try always to fit this, and then if you want, you can uh, take out this term. But for example, for molten metal filtration, this corresponds to more than 90, 95% of the total pressure drop comes from this. If you're taking a facial mask or a membrane, for, for example, for filtration, uh, normally 90, or a facial mask is about 90 or 85% comes from here and 15% comes from here. There's a number, Bernardo, called the four charmers number. Uh, if you take this, this for Scheimer number, you know exactly uh, the percentage of contribution of each term. Then if you want, you can disregard. But normally I don't dis disregard because I already have the two terms. So I don't need to take out anyone. Uh, this is okay, okay, okay. Here, experimental, uh, different types of materials. This is, is the worksheet, the Excel sheet that you use to collect the data, volume, time, or directly the flow rate, depending on the, uh, the range, the pressure drop, then you can fit. Uh, you see here that it looks like a straight line, but if you fit a parabolic uh, curve, you have much more um, uh, a reliable fitting. So here we have the, the two constants or the two coefficients, the K1 and K2. Uh, here we have the same equation. Just to remember, I don't know if you use that. If you work with gas, you need to use the delta P uh, for compressible fluids. Never forget that because sometimes this curve that has a, um, I don't say curvatura positiva, con, con, convex or concave. How do you say when the curvature is up? Because you have the curvature down. There's a name, English name for that. Concave. concave. And the other convex. Okay. If you use the wrong uh, equation, you can have the convex curve which is uh, wrong because you have negative values for the coefficients, which, is, which has no physical meaning for that. Uh, I, do, I, I say that because if I do that in the lab, I got the convex curve, which is wrong because this is why uh, I see many people using Darcy's law because Darcy's law is just a, a straight line going up. But for a quadratic one, you can have two types of curvatures. So one is wrong. It's very important to when you're going to measure. Uh, then you collect the experimental data, do the parabolic fitting and get the, the two coefficients. So that's important because the coefficients are medium properties. It does not belong to the fluids. This is important, for example, for a mortar or a, a cement paste. Uh, normally, they say to test with water flow, but I test with uh, with air flow or argon flow, oxygen flow, nitrogen flow. Then I extrapolate the data to water flow, uh, except for the capillarity, which sometimes we have. Uh, the K1, K2 uh, obtained using uh, with air is very similar or the same as you use water. But using air is much faster to get the data. And for example, in half an hour, you have the complete uh, experiment. For water, sometimes you need two days to have a drop of water from one side to the other side. So get time, get faster experiments using one fluid. And uh, uh, if you do the correct equation, you can get the parameter, uh, which is... Uh, independent of the fluid that you use for the experiment. Uh, this is another, this was my PhD 
testing this candle filter for hot gas filtration in Birmingham. Uh, here we need also to use the correct equation, which is not the same because this one is for flat materials. For example, if you have a membrane or a plaque, plaque, plate, any, any flat surface. Okay, that's the, the correct. Any flat surface, but you have a cylindrical surface, you need to use this equation. But the, the same thing, you have the K1, the linear term, and then you have the K2 and the quadratic term. But for example, for this type of application, hot gas filtration, which means flue gases coming from a boiler, normally you go from seven, of, from a boiler or for an incineration plant. For example, here in Europe, you have, um, I don't know if you have a lot, but more than we have incineration plants. And you need to do the filtration, normally a catalytic filtration. So in this filter, you have, this filter is made of fibros, uh, mineral fibers. And you can reach about 95% of porosity. So it's very light uh, material. Uh, but normally they have also a catalyst, so you can just filtrate the suspension, the, the aerosol, but also convert the pollutant dioxins into less harmful components. So they have also a catalyst there. Uh, well, after we got a lot of data, in 2005, we started to put this K1 and K2 data in a map. This was the place, this was a book, the Cellular Ceramics, made by, uh, edited by uh, Professor Michael Scheffler and Professor Paulo Colombo. Paulo Colombo is my friend from Italy. He's a, I think he's also a visiting professor in the London College, I think, here. Uh, and we wrote a chapter about permeability of cellular ceramics. In fact, the permeability of uh, any type of ceramics. And the first time that you put the data, we see this. Uh, regardless the type, the shape of the shape, the, 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 the porosity, the pore size, regardless of all uh, micro, microstructural parameters, the permeability followed uh, just a single line, a single trend. Then we start to grow the map. And today we have more than a thousand data gathered uh, in the lab. These uh, are our own data coming from our partners. So we see that all the complexity of shapes goes to one single trend. And the trend is, uh, we can predict the trend with this equation. I hope in the future to write uh, my final paper in my life will be about this trend. Just be aware. <laughs> I hope to maybe with the partnership uh, with you because it, I don't have yet an explanation. How, uh, how many different shapes can uh, fit a single? This Bernardo is the point about the, the K1 and K2. Just to let you know, uh, we talked about the Ergun equation. Ergun equation. I don't know if you. I will show Ergun. Most of the people in the room don't, don't know. This don't, don't know. I mean, the, these guys there at the back, they're kind of like an isolated. For experience. chemical engineering, you must know. <laughs> for, for civil engineering, we don't need to know because normally you use, if you use Darcy's law. It's okay, it's not wrong using Darcy's law, but it's too simplistic to extrapolate the, the trends. For environmental engineering, uh, maybe if you go to some part, for example, for membranes, you need to, for mechanical engineering, I don't know if you, some, some, some you don't use it there. No, no, go, no, 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 go, go. no, no, no. Uh, but the, uh, this equation is the, I think it's the most used equation for us that to predict the flow through to granular materials. 
this equation was made in uh, 1952. And this equation predicts that you can, we can predict the permeability of the materials knowing the pore size or the particle size and the porosity here. Uh, this equation was prepared using a range here. But the equation today, we see that the equation is wrong. Because they, see, if you take this equation, you take this like a straight line here and go through here. That's my paper that I'm not complaining about Ergun, but showing that Ergun is a very limited equation to predict the permeability of material. You know, what is more important? This equation was prepared for granular materials, sands uh, or granules, uh, catalysts, spheres. But here, we don't have any sphere here. We just have consolidated porous materials of different types. For example, this is a lot. See, this is a, this is a scaffold for um, bio, bio implants. Scaffold. This is a target for uranium. This is a lanthanum carbide material with a lot of small pores uh, that we put fibers inside, then we burn out. The fibers went out and just have the channel, the straight channel. Uh, we have the honeycombs. Honeycombs here, ceramic foams is here. This is a silicon carbide is here. This is a fibrous mat for masks here. The HEPA, HEPA, how do you have HEPA? HEPA filters, HEPA filters are here, just to let you know. Uh, this is a castable concrete. This is the interface of the matrix and the aggregate. And you can find the permeability here. This is a porcelain tile. You can find the permeability here. So uh, all these materials in the lab. So I don't have yet an explanation for that. But I think it's quite interesting because uh, you don't see how different shapes can fit a single uh, trend. And this is nice because you can predict now and you can classify the materials according to this map. For example, this is a gradient hierarchic, I don't know how to pronounce this word, hierarchic, hierarchic aligned porosity. This is a straight line uh, material uh, with straight line pores. Uh, this is uh, used for hot gas filtration. For example, you see in this map the permeability level. You see here the, this is was measured. This, this, these parameters were measured. Uh, you have here a porosity between 60 and 80 percent and pore size about one millimeter. This is a tomographic image of the material made with the Turkey and Brazil. Again, Turkey in Brazil, this is another ceramic foam type of material. You can check the permeability level for ceramic foam replicas. For example, this was a hot air permeable uh, polymer derived reticulated ceramic foams used also for hot gas filtration. This is a silicon carbide partnership with India using for filtration of hot gases. You see here the porosity level between 30 and 50 or 40 something percent and pore size between one micron, 10 micron. And permeability level, you see how to process different materials and get different levels or orders of magnitude or impermeability. This classification were, was made by us. After we got a lot of materials, we, we saw that, for, for example, porcelain ties are here, filtration, mean, filtration means ultra filtration, micron filtration, uh, nano filtration, reverses or, or, or reverse osmosis, reverse osmosis, uh, membranes are here. Gr oh, sorry, granular filters here, cement, pa cement pastes, mortars, concretes are all in this region. This is a, a geopolymer to treat wastewater and to remove uh, ammonium. 
permeabilities uh, behind this small screen. Okay. Uh, most of materials are measured by water immersion. I measure only the accessible porosity, uh, the one that I can go with water inside. Yes, yes. I don't say inter interconnect, but at least open. You can have the porosity here. Uh, you can have the water going into, but it's not uh, permeable anyway. So that's the total porosity level. This uh, is not the permeable porosity there. This, this value. Yes, uh, for example, you, you can have the porosity, the, the geometrical porosity measuring the, the, the mass and the volume of the sample. Then you have the, 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 the geometrical. Then you have the density of the, the, the you have the, let's say, geometrical density, mass and volume, mass of the body, volume of the body, geometrical volume. Then you have the solid density measured by helium pycnometry. And you can get this one, for example, this divided by this. This is the total porosity that you have. Yes? That one, I didn't use this equation. I used a similar one. One divided by apparent porosity by solid, uh, apparent density by solid density. This one was by water immersion with uh, Archimedes. This is the open. This is the total porosity. In that map, I, I put this one. But it's not always, not all the open porosities use it for permeation. And if you see, you have a very similar range, but you see very different permeation levels. So probably a great part of that porosity is closed for permeation. It's open to enter the water, but it's not interconnected from one side to the other side. So for filtration, this is very bad. That's uh, how we can uh, choose a formulation to improve the formulation uh, for a given application. For example, we have to exclude this formulation or the processing condition to get this material. Because even if it has a, a interesting porosity level, it has a very bad permeability for the filtration application. Uh, here, this is for corrugated uh, fiber boards. For example, we measure the permeability in the crest. This is the trough, trough, trough. And we have the crest. And we measure the permeability of the crest downwards or upwards and for the trough upwards and downwards, and it's different. And here you see the micro cracking uh, operating. For example, we have a lot of micro cracks here, less than we have here, because during the corrugation process, you have a compression for the, for the troughs and you have a, a, a tra traction test, tensão, Traction? Tension. No, tension is, uh, it's, uh, I don't know the name, but uh, it's, it's a kind of tension. Sorry for that. But anyway, we, we, we got for the first time the permeability of this material. We don't have any other uh, um, set of data available in the literature. This was pa a paper in 2019. We did it in, in our lab. 
For the bamboo, bamboo is a very interesting material because you have the permeability like adobe brick. Uh, you have the three directions. And for, for example, for bamboo, you have one direction here. If you go in the longitudinal uh, way, you have uh, almost four orders of magnitude higher the permeability. So what's the point for this material? For example, if you want to impregnate a resin inside the bamboo, you can predict the time to impregnate. For To predict the time for impregnation, uh, you need to know the permeability. We have, you're going to apply a pressure and get a flow. The flow must be enough to fill all the pores. So you, if you have the flow and you have the volume, you, you can find the time to fill out. So for example, using this data, you can see that if you try to apply in a given direction, you can take 20 or two days, three days, 20 hours or three days uh, time. But if you apply in the right um, uh, direction, for example, in one hour, you can fill all the pores and have the resin impregnated completely. So that's one type of use of permeation. Uh, this is just a map for uh, study rock, cement, paste, geopolymers. This data where uh, we got from geopolymers and for, uh, from mortar materials. And you he here you have some materials from rock science, lava, uh, permeable basalt gravel, uh, sand, I will sometime I, I have a piece of highlight in the lab to try to test the permeability. Came from Petrobras. Uh, they got the rock, the, the piece 3,000 meters below the ground, the sea level. The, no, be, below the ground level, below, below the sea. Three kilometers below the level of water. They got a rock, and I have that to test the permeability. So it's my next target. Yes, yes, for the first time, we're going to have. So my world record of measuring permeability. These are our data so far. And this is a terpene, terpene, ter, ter what? How do you say? Terpene. Terpene uh, film used to packaging materials. Like Bernardo, like, like Hernani Barud's uh, films. We have a common friend in Brazil. So that's, uh, this is here. We have 10 to the minus 25 square meters. This is the, the lowest permeability we got in the lab. Just to let you know, if this was a fingernail, uh, in, in size, in size, I mean area, one centimeter square. Uh, UK is here, the size of UK is here, in area. Brazil is there, the planet is there. And uh, I, uh, the, the, uh, the thing that I found near to 10 to the minus five is the size of Uranus. The planet Earth is here, just to let you know. So you're going from a fingernail to a planet in this scale, please. Yeah, the idea of the, the for example, the film, the film normally you have a selective permeation. You want to have oxygen to permeate or to CO2 to permeate and to, uh, to act as a barrier for oxygen. So the idea behind measuring is to predict the time that you have a volume of a uh, uh, type of gas to go in from one side to the other side in a packaging film. Diffusion? Yes, uh, uh, yes, that's a good question. Uh, by diffusion, uh, what's the difference between diffusion and permeation? Time. In diffusion, nature goes, and you have to wait, for example, years to have the effect. By permeation, you just speed up 
the test. But of course, uh, in practice, you're doing you're not going to have a permeation through a film, but it allows you to investigate the ability of the film to uh, to allow the, the fluid to go through. That's why. But please ask. Sorry. No, no, you. Yeah. So, so uh, the idea is uh, the, uh, the permeability of the film is to find the ability uh, to let the fluid cross. But we don't have this in practice. In practice, you have the diffusion mechanism. Uh, the same film, uh, if you go to the other scale, the other scale in the K, K2, the unit is meter, square meter. So if you go to 10 to the minus 35, if this was the diameter of a COVID virus, then here you have 1 billion light years of size. Just to let you know how uh, uh, spread you can go in permeation. For porosity, you go from zero to one. For pore size, you go, goes, you go from one nanometer, one angstrom to one millimeter. But for permeation, you can have 35 or 33 orders of magnitude in difference for the materials. In practice, measuring uh, how to use that. You, uh, for example, you're not going to use Darcy's law for a uh, for this material, for the, the, the film here. But you know the ability of the film to let the oxygen to go through. So you can predict, even using the diffusion fixed law equation. Because for fixed law, you have the permeability and you have the solubility. The product of the, the, the diffusivity and solubility, you get the permeability to predict. So this is the same here. Uh, so just to let you know how to use the K1, again, Bernardo, I use the equation. So what's our, what is our target? Our target is to lower always pressure drop if you want to get more flow. So lower pressure drop means lower power, energy input, which means savings, savings in energy, savings, savings in environment because you save the electric energy, power energy. So uh, the permeability coefficients uh, are intrinsic properties of the porous structure. They should not vary with the fluid features, which I told you before. Uh, but they can show, uh, they can change uh, if you change porosity, pore size, pore shape, or pore connectivity. So uh, how can we uh, connect these parameters with permeability? For example, using the Irgun equation. This Bernardo is a, I, I talk I talk to Bernardo because now I know his name. <laughs> Soon I will know the hey, other's hey, name. Bernardo. Yes, our Bernardo, help me please. <laughs> now uh, we have two materials. One material with this uh, K1, one to 10, ten to the minus five square meter. We have the K2. If you have a ten meter water column. And you want to collect one liter of the the the, the, the water uh, using this equation. How long do you take? You need one to ten, 10 to the minus seven seconds. It's almost instantaneous. But if you have a material with one to the 10 to the minus twenty-five square meter a fume with the same water column, ten meter, one one atmosphere, one bar of pressure. Uh, you can wait for 40 years to have the same one liter. That's the scale that we're talking about. This is the, the famous now, uh, Skumar Ergun. Yeah. Ergun is this guy. He, is, he passed away in 2006. But a very famous, he has a place in heaven because we use his name every day in our area. So you talk to Zeus? Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> side by side. Okay. Uh, his, this is his famous uh, paper where we got the relationship that they told you about the 
the K1 with the porosity and with the equivalent diameter. And if you replace the equivalent diameter with the pore size, we can have this kind of equation. This equation I have used in the lab and it's very interesting because if we measure, Juliana, if we measure the K1, which is easy to measure, uh, much more easy to measure pore size. And if you measure uh, porosity, which is not a complex thing to measure porosity, the total volume of pore, then we can predict a size, a typical size of pore, which is a um, permeable average pore size. It's not the, the complete pore size, the, this, the average pore size, which is permeable to a fluid. And if, if you use, use this equation, for example, for this material, uh, having this uh, K1 scale uh, with 90% of porosity, which means this is a ceramic foam, 10 PPI ceramic foam. Do you know PPI? Pores per inch, linear inch. Uh, for uh, cellular ceramics, uh, the pores are so large that if you put a roller, roller over the material, you can measure how many pores you have in one inch. So you have, for example, 10 PPI, it's 10 pores per inch. If you have one inch, you can read or see 10 pores. Uh, the lowest pore size, lowest PPI is five PPI. I have five pores per inch. The highest you can have uh, 400 PPI. It's, it's used for filtration. Uh, for example, you can get a pore, oh, sorry, you can get a pore size of 2.7 centimeters. But if you have this material, a, a polymeric film, you can find pores in the angstrom scale, uh, the, the permeable pore size. So, Juliana, uh, it's only a prediction, but you can compare materials. For example, for a same set of material, for example, for a concrete paste or a cement paste, every time that you have a, a change, for example, carbonation or change in the water cement, you measure permeability, measure porosity, and calculate the pore size. And you see if the pore size is increasing or decreasing. And you see what you want to decrease or increase. So you have a very good clue to where you should go in processing. So this information is helpful for processing of the material. Uh, here, the PPI I told you, if you put a ruler, this is one application. Uh, this is application for indoor air okay. Who is the one who is working with the indoor air quality for filtration, air filtration? Or, Okay, okay. In this case, we use the uh, ceramic foam, uh, 20 PPI and 40 PPI, and just put these nanowires on the surface of the struts. So you see here the nanowires covering, and what was the idea? The idea was to simulate our defenses. So in this case, you have a lot of nanowires. The idea is that the nanowire works to help the diffusion uh, mechanism to collect particles. So the smaller the, 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 the filament here, uh, the smaller are the particles that you are going to collect. So you got this. These particles are kind of fine. Yes, yes, yes. Every time that a particle uh, hits the filament, this, the, 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 the nanowire, you have a collection of the particle. If you have a, a, a very large velocity, then you have the heat and the bouncing of the particle. You don't collect anymore. But in normal use, you have the, the, the improvements of the collection enhancement. So just to let you know, the HEPA filters are here. And we got the silicon carbide with nanowire foam filters. The uh, permea uh, permeation level, almost three orders of magnitude higher, which is better. Uh, the idea is not to, of course, using this as a mask. 
but using this is as a um, air conditioning device to to help the the control of uh, aerosol inside in the environments. Yeah. Yes. Uh, absorb permanently or uh, like a breathing. Uh, uh, they stuck for a while and then release it back. Uh, okay, okay, we don't need to, okay, okay. Not a chemical, just a physical. Uh, some chemical, uh, okay. But it will work for a while, then you can have the saturation of the medium. Okay. I have a partner in India from central, from Kolkata, Kolkata uh, from the Central Glass and Ceramic Research Institute. Uh, she is, she's willing a lot to work with VOC retention. She is my partner who produces the silicon carbide materials. And she is some weeks ago, she asked me if I know anyone who would like to try her materials so if you <laughs> so you have already my material to test i have already tested the material for wastewater to remove turbidity and to remove some metals to by absorption uh, but she now wants to try the VOC. I don't know which treatment, surface treatment she's doing in her material, but she's asking me, uh, could you try um, aerosol filtration? Yes, aerosol filtration I can do in my lab uh, because permeation is just one part of my life, uh, but I, don't, I cannot test VOC uh, retention. Probably you can do that. Um, okay, okay. In this case, I can put you in contact with her and she'll be happy and maybe you, you probably will yeah. be happy too. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, this is why we're in the board. I'm using permeation just uh, to show you that you have a lot of materials to, to, to analyze and to find the application. That's the common point of all my materials, but uh, it's not my life the whole day, only measuring. I have to measure and to find the application, the performance. Just to let you know that pressure drop of all these uh, materials with the nanowires uh, had a lower pressure drop here, the materials. This is the HEPA filter level of pressure drop. For example, yeah, using this velo typical velocity. This is a typical velocity for a face mask for human breathing. Uh, and we found that this is for pressure drop, but we need also to have the collection efficiency. Uh, this is the HEPA filter level, almost 100%, 99% of efficiency for particles in the most penetrating particle size. Uh, which is now uh, almost 300 nanometers, the range of the most penetrating particle size. We measure the, the, our foams in the lab and we compared with the HEPA filters. And we found that you have uh, four centimeters, 40 uh, millimeters or four centimeters thick piece 
you have lower pressure drop and you have the same level of efficiency for a HEPA filter. What is the advantage in this case? Uh, this is not a disposable material. You can uh, regenerate that. And you can also put some catalytic uh, material on, on the surface to have a side effect, for example, to retain or to convert dioxins or VOCs or other pollutants inside. Uh, okay, oh, at 12 o'clock, for God's sake. Okay, just to let you... Uh, more... I have just more 2,200 slides. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's, it's, uh, it's... Yeah. Yes, no. No, it's for me. It's no problem. I just uh, just let's uh, see. I have twenty slides, but it's only of pictures showing the equipment. It's not too too long, but I am at your time. Okay. Yeah. But you tell me. Okay. 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 Just this is another uh, uh, tool where you get a lot of information from the material. This what we call the hot gas permeometry. This is a nice for uh, cement pastes or construction materials. It's like a DSC or TGA. TGA, you say, uh, technique. So you pass a flow of uh, any fluid and you get a result, uh, you can have a signal on, on the other side. This is our equi equipment, version 2.0, the version 3.0 is in Padova now. Uh, we have two options to operate, the transient operation, the steady state operation. Uh, in this case, we keep... Uh, constant the pressure and see the signal of flow on, on the other side in the steady stage operation, we put the pressure and measure the flow rate. Uh, what we can get from this technique, for example, the watering of removal of free water, dehydration, organic fiber or polymer degradation, carbonation, oxidation, micro crack generation, all these uh, events we can track uh, inside the material using this technique. And uh, we, these are re irreversible changes, but we can also have reversible changes, which means thermal expansion. This is a typical uh, a set of data where you get this silicon uh, carbide filter and we test from 22 degrees to 430 degrees and you have different curves the pressure drop is increasing, but it's increasing because the gas viscosity increases, but also we have a density decrease. But after all, we can check if the structure changes. Uh, and we see that it changes, the K1 and the K2 change. So the microstructure is opening or uh, closing due to thermal expansion. Because sometimes you predict the, the, the behavior at the room temperature, but you're going to applicate the material at very high temperatures. So to predict it there, we have a, a, an equipment that measure in the real uh, temperature of the event. This is the material. Oh, this is to show that the gas, as we hit the material, you get the signal of, for example, of vapor. And if you have the vapor, you have the peak, and we can track the peak of the gas flowing through the material, out the, from the material, for example. Uh, this is another test with a high flow. If you have the same temperature, you have the flow um, uh, always constant. But as you hit, you can have more flow because the structure opens, 
and you have uh, a degree signal or a peak signal or a degree signal. This is what we get, for example, for a cement paste or a concrete. In this case, we have a fiber-free and a fiber uh, a fiber free cement or concrete with the khaki uh, cement. And we put 0.09% of fiber, polymeric fiber, uh, polypropylene fiber. And then we hit. As we hit, in this case, you see very similar patterns. And the pattern is because of the dehydration. So we can track the type of the cement hydrate here. It's not a TG, this is a permeometry technique because you have the flow and you have the signal out there. So you can track here the flow rate going out of the material. But if you take the same material and do with a higher pressure, you can see exactly the temperature that the fiber goes out and you have the increase in permeability because the fiber normally is used in concrete to increase the permeability, the refractory concretes. You put the fiber to create voids. Why? Because when you create voids, you make easier the drying of the concrete. So this is another uh, technique that you have. So we, now we can track the polypropylene. Uh, it's, we cannot see here, but it's cellulose fiber. And you can compare it with DSC or TGA in the permeometry, we say hot air permeability or hot air perme permeometry technique. You can see the same events using the technique. And you see the increase in permeability that you can get. This yellow here is the fiber free and this other one is with the fiber content. And this is the mechanism. And you can check the size of the fibers, increasing the size of the fibers. You have different signals and different uh, increase in permeation. And this is the last one. This is the last technique, uh, Bernardo, uh, which I use to uh, evaluate perme uh, polymer films, all kinds of polymer films. For example, that your name is sorry? Uh, yeah. Young. Uh, for the, that terrifying uh, film, I use this technique. I just put the sample, uh, apply a pressure, and measure the time that it goes to decrease the, the pressure. So it's very easy. Uh, we have a, a Arduino uh, system to collect the data. So in a few hours or a few minutes, I can get the, the information. Uh, here are the devices. These are some films, for example. This is the, the equipment that, uh, that I use to track the permeation in a, um, a corrugated film. For example, this is a, a corrugated film. We have all the crests and troughs here, 12, and we have three positions. And we can track with air or water. These are the curves. And these are the results. So I can track it everywhere and we can find the, the positions where, for example, uh, your name, sorry? Dinesh. Dinesh. Uh, here we can find the places where we have the micro cracking, for example, in a, uh, in a material. So you, you see the green, uh, um, green squares are the points with the good permeability. Good means low permeability, and you have the red ones with the bad permeability, which means that you have a lot of flow. In this case, you don't want to have flow for the corrugated film. And what we normally, a standard method gets in 24 hours for a test, we get in six seconds using this technique. So it's a very easy. Uh, a very helpful technique. Now we're just, this is the very end. We're just trying now using water repellents to see the effect on each point of the, uh, the corrugated sheet. For example, here we don't have any, any kind of uh, uh, repellent. You see that the drop of water goes inside because of the there is no surface tension. Then here we applied the, the repellent over 
the top layer, top side of the sheet. This we applied in the bottom side of the sheet, and this we applied in, in the two sides of the sheet. And we, you can, these uh, are the levels of permeation everywhere. So you can track this. Sorry. Ah, <laughs> the most <laughs> awaited slide. <laughs> no, no uh, sorry, because I, I have to talk about this two after this two can help, uh, can talk to you for each application. Otherwise, I could not uh, explore all my uh, my tools that I have in the lab. Sorry for that. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, thank you very much, Murilo, for a very interesting talk today. A lot of uh, synergies happening already. So that's what we would like to see and we, we saw today. So thank you once again for coming all the way to Brazil, uh, to, from Brazil to, to talk to us today. And we're very pleased to see how many interactions we have already generated. So um, any questions for Professor Murilo? Uh, from the online people or from our audience here. Can I get any questions from you? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I got a couple of questions, but uh, I think I will just uh, ask my first and then uh, let the others take over. Um, well, the, the, the first question is about the repeatability of the measurement. So, yes. Um, I have I have some experience in uh, composite manufacturing. Uh, one of the method is to uh, inject the resin into the dry fiber textiles, um, evaluating the probability is uh, a key factor to optimize this process. Um, but uh, from my reading into the literature, people say that there may be some several orders of magnitude difference between um, and the measurement of this lab and the other labs. Um, you probably can have some consistency between, um, well, different times of measurement on the same device, but... Uh... Yeah, yeah, you were right about that. Uh, I think the two, uh, no, uh, two main reasons for the difference between the labs. First, the equation that the lab uses. For example, some labs, I see a lot, a lot, a lot of papers that use Darcy's law. For example, to to um, to fit the data and extract a permeability value. So this is one point. I see uh, groups using Darcy's law, other groups using the uh, Ergun or Forsheimer equations. The other point is the compressibility effect. I see some labs using the equation for gases without the compression. Uh, this is a square equation, the delta P. You need to do that. So this is one point. Uh, the other point to have a difference is the this. This is the sample. For example, you have the sample in a sample holder. And this is the, uh, if you see the sample here, the uh, round sample, and here you have the useful diameter where the flows go inside. This is a very possible problem. Uh, the flow does not flow, the fluid does not flow like this. This goes like this. So depends, depending on the thickness of the sample, you can have a different uh, fitting of the data. So to compare one lab to the other lab, you should have the same thickness of the material, same equation, uh, and uh, same equation, in fact. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I do go in, in triplicate, triplicate yeah. three times for, for each, each, each batch. Okay. Uh, just a quick follow-up on this. Uh, do you think there may be a size effect uh, of your test sample? 
if you test it a smaller sample, then you will get different values than the bigger Yes, sample. yes, it is a problem. For example, if you have uh, a concrete where you have the aggregate, uh, one point, for example, let's see here. You have the, the sample here. I represent here, you see the thickness, the cross section, see, you here, see the sample uh, over. For example, you have a, if you have an aggregate going from one side to the other side, you have here a, a flow path that cross the sample. So this is a problem. In this case, the first uh, thing that I ask it to you, for example, if we're going to send the material, what's the largest particle size that you have in your material? So in this case, for example, if you have one centimeter aggregate, I will ask you to send to me uh, at least uh, four times or five times the size of the largest particle or the largest pore. If you are pore five millimeters in diameter, I need uh, five times five to uh, long. Uh, otherwise, uh, we are going to have uh, this side effect. Um, no, others, uh, no, you can ask it. <laughs> Is there anybody online who's wishing to ask a question? I will leave the presentation, of course, afterwards, so you can share and have it to at least to see the applications. Then we can talk about the specific points. We'll come back to young uh, Richard. You had a question. I've got, I've got a box of... <laughs> Oh, I don't know where, where, where do I start? Um, <laughs> I want to speak to you afterwards anyway. Oh, <laughs> yes, you, yes, but, of course, um, of course. No. Yeah, uh, I, I was, as I said, we were, talk, we were talking about the car, carbon, carbonation. Yes. Concrete, that's, that's sort of quite interesting. Um, so. I have I'm, some slides to show you afterwards, yes, yeah. uh, specifically about the carbonation. Yeah, so um, I, I think the talk was very, very interesting. I, th I think that um, some something that I was uh, wondering wondering about is uh, you're plotting your k one and k two values and they're producing that curve and you have yes. like an exponential relationship and lo looking at the, the equation on the board the k one and k two have got very common terms in so could you predict the curve that you would expect from those terms and why do you get it do you, does it does it does an exponential drop out of that once I tried to put a room equation, can you see the, the it's yeah, yeah. it's not the, the, the black one. Ah, the black one is here. That's all. Thank you, Oshina. This is the trend. Mm. And then I put the, the K1 and K2 come from a room here. And what you got is this. So one of the two is wrong in terms of the what nature's nature is telling mm -hmm. to us. So, uh, but I always use this uh, to find the pore size. Every time that I use this to, for, for example, I can isolate the the, uh, the DP the pore size here or the, the pore size here. Every time that I use this equation. I have more um, realistic numbers compared to the other techniques. But if I use this one, I don't have uh, an, even the same uh, order of magnitude of the pore size. In my opinion, this one is wrong. Not wrong. It was okay because Ergun just tried to use in this region. So he does or didn't know uh about the extrapolation today we see that if we plot these two equations it goes here it's very far from the actual uh set of data so in my view uh the point is that you, you should not use the two together just yeah. use this but not to predict the k1 but to predict the delta uh, the the pore size or the particle size Thank you. And um, also, you were um, 
presenting the work you did on the corrugated concrete yes. with the with the five with the fibers in. So um, I'm I'm quite sort of in, interested in permeability of fiber, right. you know, fiber composites where you have a matrix that's got some permeability yeah. and also fibers as well. What's interesting about the corrugated is that uh, we apply a pressure here, uh, but in this case, the, we have two directions for permeation. You have the permeation, this is the thickness, you have the permeation here, but you also have more permeation here because you have uh, uh, several layers of the material when you prepare by the, I think the name is hot check method for preparing. So uh, the permeation, uh, interlayer permeation is much higher than the true permeation. Sometimes you apply it here, for example, a pulse of water and you collect the water here, not the water here. So you, you see the water spreading through the layers or between the layers, in what, fact. What, what were the fibers? I, fibers, they, uh, fibers, in Brazil, five years ago, it was forbidden to use the asbestos only five yeah. years ago. But we have a lot. Yeah. Mm. Yes, uh, bad, bad thing. Today, they use the polypropylene fibers together with cellulose fibers. Sometimes yeah. they use the PVA, polyvinyl alcohol yeah. uh, fibers, but still today they're trying to find the best for the mechanical strength sides of yeah. but for the permeation side uh i think it's similar the behavior uh, the difference the uh, it's the presence of a micro cracks so you get preferential flow along the interface with the fiber and that will take yes we have the preference here yeah. and also if you see uh can i show juliana just one slide uh, uh, just to show you one uh, I think given that Richard's had yeah, I've uh, this uh, well, yeah, his second question. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Well, and then maybe we we'll see you in a few minutes and go to the side of the room. Yeah. Yeah. If you apply the pressure, uh, for example, here, sometimes you get the water here. Yeah. Along the length, the the corrugated. I don't know the name. Along the, the length of the sheet. Yes, okay. the length of the sheet. So that's the the here. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Just uh, actually, uh, maybe it's a bit aligned with this question. Um, if you think about a uh, multi-scale material uh, with uh, different scales of pr porosity, oh, porosity, yes. Um, do you have any? Uh, I don't know. Um, opinion how to optimize the permeability to improve the permeability without um, um, increasing the porosity or whether we for example think about the two scales uh, for um, porosity probably uh, you're going to have two mechanisms for the macro macro porosity uh, you have the permeation going through the macro one uh, but you have have also the diffusion going to the the smaller porosity. So you have the two effects. You cannot disregard the two. But for uh, an applica industrial application, you have the main flow. The main flow is by permeation. So by, perme by the, the techniques that we use, you can find the pressure drop flow relationship, but you cannot see the micron porosity and the diffusion. In this case, we still need, for example, to find the uh, BT surface area and other parameters to estimate how much you can increase the available surface to the other mechanism for absorption or catalysis, etc. So uh, unfortunately, uh, you cannot choose check the permeation of the two scales separately. Uh, you, you have the, the whole set. Thank you. Okay, any one last question, Krish? Yes. Thank you. Uh, this could be very naive. Uh, I'm I'm just curious to know uh, if uh, why not polymers and uh, polymeric membranes, uh, and and in that case, how do you see the trend? Because I see most of what you have reported are ceramics. 
no, I Did have a lot of slides oh. about polymers. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, yes, I, I have a lot of data for the polymeric films. I can show you. Uh, uh, but in this case, I don't have a relationship to, with porosity because for polymeric films, they don't even use the word porosity, uh, just a non-porous material. But I have a lot of data for permeation of polymeric films or for membrane uh, materials. I can show you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, sorry for that, for the, the time. But uh, oh, no. this is the start point for uh, other talks that we can have about specific materials. I have a lot, lot of data to share with you. Um, yes, thank you again, everyone, for your questions and making this session even more interesting and engaging. So if you want to talk to Professor Nocentini uh, to more specific subjects, we are holding sessions at the charging station on Thursday from 10 to 4 o'clock. So they are divided in three slots, so 10 to 11, and then 1 to one to two and then three to four. So you're welcome to pop by and, and, and just yeah find us there. And Muriel will be very happy to, to hold uh, a session with you and discuss any subject further. No, just, just pop by. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I would like to say also that the lab is open for any interaction that you want, any material that you want to test. It will be a pleasure to measure, it will be a pleasure to have you there, also in Brazil, to, to be with us there. Of course, that I will be with you here also. So yeah, Professor Mill is with us until Friday. Um, if you are interested to have a one-to-one -one and you can't attend the Thursday slots, just drop us an email. I'll make sure as well that we try to circulate Murilo's um, uh, contact details uh, in Brazil so you can contact him at any time beyond this week. Uh, he is the professor for the next three years at Bath. So we're hoping that, you know, if there's enough engagement, then you know, Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Once again, thank you, Muriel, very much.